As great as working from home has been, a lot of us are now mobile. So wouldn't it be awesome to have a lightweight keyboard wherever you go? Our own search for an easy solution led us to this, the Logitech K580 keyboard, which connects with Bluetooth or 2.4 gig receiver to multiple devices. So whether you want to maximize your home workspace or need a slim keyboard that fits into a backpack for that on-the-go productivity, the K580 should have you covered. And we put it through its paces to see how it stacks up. And you can also maximize your cooling with our sponsor, Noctua. Noctua's Redux Edition offers premium case cooling with industry-grade hydro bearings and vortex control blade tip notches for supremely quiet and exceptional long-term operation. And they won't break the bank. Check them out at the link below. And just a quick reminder, if this video helps you, please hit the like and subscribe, give us a quick follow on social media, and if you have questions or find another great keyboard or something you want us to check out, leave your comments down below. Any updates will be on the techspinreview.com companion post. So Logitech markets this wireless keyboard's compactness as its main draw, but build quality is also really good with minimal flex, and this keyboard is also very quiet with its low profile laptop style keys. Connecting with Bluetooth and the 2.4 gigahertz receiver, the gray colored easy switch keys make it a snap to be working on your PC, and then with one button press, write a reply on a phone message. Functionality with Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, or Android, the 10 meter range, and full size key spacing all checked boxes for us. The built-in cradle being wide enough that we didn't need to remove our phone cases was a practical touch. The number pad is perfect for data entry, though compact size means a half height up down arrow. It's sleek and modern looking, and we only encountered an issue once, after trying compatibility with several devices. We tried a previous pair with an Android phone, it appeared to connect, but the keyboard didn't work. Clearing the saved Bluetooth device profile on Android and repairing by holding down the device button got it back up quickly. Probably just a Bluetooth hiccup, as this keyboard's been rock solid for us otherwise. This Logitech K580 Slim has been superseded by the K780 though the K580 can still often be found at a price lower than 50 bucks in the States, $60 in Canada, roughly 70 pounds in the UK, and a very cheap 1200 NT here in Taiwan, all with a one-year hardware warranty. While the K780 has improvements over the K580, such as three-device easy switching, an open cradle designed to fit any size device, and the new round-shaped key style, it's also over 50% heavier, 875 grams. So you can get this lighter version at a discount. Obviously, key markings will vary by region. Our Taiwanese version here has extra Chinese symbols. The Logitech K580 is a compact 14.4 centimeters high by 37.4 wide and 2.1 deep, weighing in at 558 grams, which is nearly 20 ounces or just over a pound. This may seem heavy for its small size, but it feels sturdy and appropriate for ensuring the weight of a large smartphone won't tip it backwards. A quick setup guide and a pair of AAA batteries are included. To install the batteries, the gray top bar slides up and off, also revealing the storage spot for the USB dongle. The cover also functions as the device cradle, which snaps very securely back into place. The Logitech K580's design is that of a laptop-style keyboard with pleasing, rounded edges. It uses membrane switches with short throw keys that make very little noise when pressed. Their motion is snappy and satisfying with a very slight wobble, no pre-travel, and immediate response when typing. The keys themselves are a matte plastic with a slight texture that resists fingerprints and smudges. It's available in an off-white version, which was pretty tempting, as well as this professional-looking graphite colorway we have here today. The top row of keys are your media controls, which work as expected in various applications, also doubling as your function keys. These are 60% high at 9mm versus 15 for the number row to shift row, and the bottom row is 16mm high. As it has full-size keys, there's no issue for larger hands, though the half-height up-down arrows may not be everyone's favorite sacrifice here. Let's do a quick typing test. It's not easily visible anywhere, but if you've had a Logitech keyboard before, you probably know there may be software to customize it a little. There's just a really tiny mention on the quick start guide paper. The Logitech K580 can work with Logitech options to customize the function keys a bit, as well as annoy you, I mean alert you, when your caps lock is on or the battery is running low. And there's software versions for Windows and Mac. The build quality is very solid, and I have to try pretty hard to get any flex out of it. 
And even then, it barely does, without any creaking noise. The back of the keyboard is an ultra simple affair with just five wide rubber feet. The rubber feet stick pretty well, even to a more slick surface. The Logitech K580 has a quoted battery life of 24 months, and the power switch is on the top edge above the delete key. It shouldn't get switched on by accident if in a bag, and it feels solid yet still easy to switch with a single hand. There's a small light that flashes when it's powered on, indicating which device profile is active. The cradle is wide and deep enough to hold most modern smartphones and some smaller tablets, although if you use a heavy-duty case or want to hold a really big phone horizontally, it may not fit. With a phone in the cradle, the keyboard feels secure and balanced with no threat of tipping. There isn't any angle adjustment for your device or keyboard height, but devices are held at an angle that makes viewing the screen easy and comfortable. The machining of the top bar seems solid, though the one-piece redesign for the newer K780 makes us think that some wear and tear with heavier tablets may have prompted an alteration. Let's get on to device connectivity. With a 10 meter range, pairing with a computer is simple. Just insert the provided USB dongle into your PC, turn the keyboard on, and a Logitech driver installer will start up automatically. The installer gives you the option to connect to your device via the included unifying receiver, a Logitech Bolt receiver if you already use one, or Bluetooth. We tried both unifying receiver and Bluetooth and both paired quickly and without issue. To add a device, long press the easy switch key you want to assign and look for the K580 in your device's Bluetooth menu. Once paired, your device will prompt you to type a six number key into the keyboard to verify connection. Press enter and you're all set. After that, the keyboard can easily be switched between devices by simply short pressing the gray one or two channel keys located on F11 and F12. We found switching between devices to be immediate and consistent, and the keyboard remembers devices you've previously paired with. To format the keyboard for a particular OS, just hold function and the corresponding key for three seconds. The international version we have here can switch between Windows and Mac OS formats, while the US version can also work with Chromebooks using Chrome OS. We tried multiple combinations of connected devices, PC and smartphone, PC and tablet, smartphone and tablet, and PC and PC, all of which worked. Either channel can connect with Bluetooth or the USB dongle. Please take a moment to hit like, get subscribed, and click the bell. It supports us making new episodes, and you'll get notified when we release new videos. Okay, well, I know why I liked this thing, but uh, tell me what were some of the things that you liked about it? When we first picked it up, we just thought the size, especially the, the size is, is compact enough that, you know, it would be versatile. We can use it in different locations. And, you know, I picked up the box and it was, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of heft to it. So I'm like, oh, okay, so it's portable too. And, uh, you know, if we, we have a new desktop or we just quickly need to test something, you can just, you know, quickly pair it with that. Yeah, yeah, I think for me, the, the pairability is really nice. Uh, I mostly use mobile devices anyway. I, I have a computer at home, but for the most part, I mostly use my iPad and I don't have one of those cases that has a keyboard on it. So something like this is sort of perfect for me to just be able to put into a bag and pull out with my iPad when I'm in a coffee shop trying to write a screenplay or whatever. So yeah. I really liked, also I'm, I'm a bit of a slave for uh, form over function. So I really like the sleek look to it. Yeah, it's got a minimalist, like a uh, very modern looking design. Yeah, and, and for I know for a lot of common uses that people use keyboards for, I'm a bit of a Luddite. So I know you like you like gaming obviously more than I do. So so any thoughts on, on its gaming performance or? Yeah, I mean, it uh, functions the same as a normal keyboard anyway. So when you're using it, you know, it works the same as a normal keyboard. You know, there are gaming keyboards with faster polling rates, but it's a keyboard, it's gonna work. You know, you can definitely game and play Fortnite or something on it, not a problem. Will you get the fastest response time ever? No, but it's really close. So, you know, it's definitely serviceable and definitely for any, you know, uh, application you're using, whether you're typing away in Word, if you're doing editing in Premiere, which we tried it on, no problems there, obviously, but uh, anything is, is pretty versatile. Just gaming specifically, you know, you may sh shave off a couple of milliseconds by using a wired keyboard. I don't know, I really need my uh, trolling comments on Reddit to go in very quickly, so uh, <laughs> I might need a faster latency than that. You checked out a, a number of devices with it, right? So which, what did you use it with? I have an iPad and I have an iPhone 12, and the iPad is the, the new Pro, 
12.9 inch. Um, but also I have a computer at home that it's keyboard for whatever reason hasn't been working. It's actually a laptop. It's like a 10 year old laptop, but it's Bluetooth still works. And I tried this on all three of those devices and it seemed to work really well. It switched back and forth between whichever two that I had. Uh, it seemed to remember the ones that I had used before, even when I didn't use it for a while. So, you know, for my use case, it it, uh, it worked pretty well. And uh, also the uh, MSI PC uh, notebook that we have here, use the dongle. Yeah, oh, that's cool. And uh, I use this myself with two Android phones and yeah, it just worked uh, almost every time except for after we did a whole run of testing we tried to repair it with an older device which i thought i'd already repaired it to but it didn't you know the it detected it but you couldn't use it so you just we just held down the button and repaired it and it was back in action actually we almost bought the uh white version because that white version looked pretty pretty clean and it does it kind of has vibes of like the silver and white mac keyboards that were really popular 10 years ago so that's true and all the uh, white builds that are happening right now a lot of people are doing a white keyboard desktop mice this kind of stuff although I'm not sure if you want a, a white mouse because those things will go, get dirty pretty fast uh, well I mean like I, Cheeto dust doesn't show up too bad on white so you know <laughs> you get an orange mouse instead right? <laughs> trust um, me I know overall impressions um yeah I like it um whatever issues like like you know I kind of would mind a rechargeable aspect to it but that it's really not a fair call necessarily because it's not like it ran out of battery power in the, the few weeks that I was using it. So the fact that it's gonna last for, you know, at least a year to two years is totally fine. I'm just used to having rechargeable peripherals. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's not the fairest of criticisms. Yeah, so. I, I like the fact that it's batteries because the rechargeable batteries, especially if you have phones, you know, you've used your phone for a while, the battery life gets shorter and shorter and shorter and you're finding yourself recharging more often, although after the first two years, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In two I just years, like the idea is like you can get a fresh clean you know, pair of batteries, which is good if you're doing testing too and you get stuck or you know, you don't know what's happening. So uh, on, you know, removing batteries, put it back in, maybe we'll reset it or help you to fix the issue, which is not bad for troubleshooting, right? Yeah. Um, so overall, it's a, it's a great um, desktop replacement too, if you're looking for, to get an actual new keyboard and you're just like, uh, this, old things broken it's like what can i buy and maybe you want to go wireless it's a good choice yeah it's not bad i liked it honestly i'm surprised how much i like the logitech k580 its heft and solidity really make me confident that it's robust enough to take heavy usage once connected to the two devices you want to use the switching between them is as easy and convenient as advertised Maybe I'd like to see the option to connect to two or more devices, since nowadays most of us have more than two peripherals, but there is the K780 for three devices, though it is a bit heavier. Let us know in the comments if you want to see that review. The Logitech option software for Windows or Mac allows function key reassignment and on-screen notifications when you press a lock key or the battery runs low. Weight and stamina are priorities for this keyboard, so there's no RGB and no backlight, so keep that in mind if you're using it in a low light environment. The option to turn on even white backlighting would be a welcome addition, though that would raise costs, add weight, and importantly, heavily reduce battery life. Rick prefers this AAA battery design, though I would have preferred to see this with a rechargeable battery, but at least the AAAs should last a couple years before dying. We've done a mega review where we covered other Logitech wireless keyboards, link up here, and this one just feels more solid, refined, better. So our new recommendation is currently this model, until we get our hands on the newer K780. The easy switch feature makes it ideal for any workflow that uses more than one peripheral, and with great build quality, the Logitech K580 is sleek, modern, and practical. So if you're looking at versatile keyboards or want something on the go, this is really up to the task, and with them often on sale below sticker price, it's a great deal. If you do decide to pick one of these up, shopping through our affiliate links below will help us here with no extra cost to you. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Techspin Review and there's companion posts on our reviews on techspinreview.com. And a big thanks to Noctua for being our sponsor this episode. We're using their high static pressure fans to cool the hard drives in our Fractal Define R5 NAS build, link up here, and they're perfect for cooling your rig, and you can check them out at the link below. So what's your most important criteria when buying a keyboard? Or did you find a sweet deal you wanna share? Join the discussion in the comments. And we're interested to hear what you wanna see reviewed. Please take a second to hit like, subscribe, the bell, and we read and reply to a lot of comments. So if you do have a question for us or if we miss something, please tell us down below. 
We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.